What's up? I'm the Calcara 131, and welcome to part two of my overpenetration series. If you missed it last week, you can find right here my part one, part one of my overpenetration series. Now, part one, if you haven't seen it, which you should, now that they all clicked off to go watch it, uh, part one was nothing more than just a drywall penetration test, okay? Let's assume that if we're talking over penetration, you flat out missed your target and it just had to go through drywall. How many pieces of drywall would it go through? In that test, the, out of my Glock 45, the Underwood 90 grain Extreme Defender plus P, I wanna say got like 16, 15 to 17, somewhere around there. The 62 grain Gold Dot, Got, I believe, the same amount, roughly like 16. This Sterling, just generic, double check, make sure I got the right stuff. Uh, Sterling, just generic, double lot buck. Got, I believe, actually it was a little bit less, like 13 or 14 pieces of drywall, roughly. So stage one was pretty effective, I think, at demonstrating. It doesn't really matter what caliber you pick, 12 gauge, nine millimeter, or 223. If you flat out miss your target, roughly the same distance, same amount of drywall is gonna penetrate. So, let's come to stage two. Now stage two is a bit more in depth here, along with some possible issues I'm expecting I'll get into. But, <clears throat> stage two is, let's assume you actually hit your target. That's this guy. This is a piece of clear ballistics gel, 10%. That's what I use for all my testing. Uh, and I cut it down to about 10 inches. Why 10 inches? Because the threat in this case, I'm giving these the best chance of over penetrating, basically. The threat in this case is uh, like a, a fucking tiny meth head, okay? The standard I always use is 12 to 18 inches of penetration in ballistics gel. That's what the FBI came up with. And that is, according to them, if a bullet gets 12 to 18 inches, it will be deep enough to hit vital organs. Not even going all the way through. So we're assuming, quote unquote, your threat is only 10 inches, okay? Now, obviously, if you don't know, penetration in ballistics gel is not the same as penetration in the human body. My point is, this, even in ballistics gel, is shallower than what vital organs should be, okay? So you scale that up to a human size, full size human, this guy is absolutely tiny, okay? If the bullet goes all the way through this, I have a fake simulated wall here. This is just drywall, not drywall, uh, plywood frames, got insulation on the inside, two by four frames. It's not the most common wall in, in the world. I don't know. This is what I have. It's what I'm gonna use. If you don't like it, do your own testing. Behind it, we have our victim, simulated victim. This is just a standard, standard uncut 16 inch block of clear ballistics gel. Now. As I said, the whole point of this is to see uh, if you hit your target, it went all the way through, our skinny little meth head here, if it went all the way through and it hit a wall, would it go through the wall? And if there just happened to be by incredibly small chance, someone directly behind it, how lethal, how deadly would it be whenever it hit the victim, okay? So as I said, I am using my preferred self-defensive load for all of these, the 9mm uh, Extreme Defender, 90 grain plus P, 62 grain Gold Dot for the 223, and Double Lot Buck for the 12 gauge. So, some issues I'm foreseeing in this. This table is not flat anymore. It kind of has like a upward curve to, sort of to it. So, I'm anticipating some issues. I got these lined up as about as best I could, but I'm still anticipating some uh, problems here with getting it to go into this block and go straight through to the back block. Best case scenario, or worst case for him, I guess. But uh, you get what I mean. I'm anticipating some issues with that, but we'll just have to wait and uh, see what happens, honestly. All right, my super slow mo is recording. My chronograph is set up. My t-shirt is sticking to me because it's really freaking hot, even in the shade. 
90 grain plus P extreme defender. Let's see if it'll go through the block and actually hit the gel behind it, behind the fake wall. Let's, let's just see what happens. Fourteen seventy six velocity. All right, so I inspected it a little bit. Color me impressed, shocked, honestly. So unshockingly it went all the way through our meth head i'll get you an up close shot it went into the bore or into the wall right here this is what surprises me it didn't come out the back that you'll see in a second that's from a separate test i did like two years ago but 90 grain plus p extreme defender went through our bad guy hit a wall and did not go all the way through here's where it entered curved up maybe a little bit Entered in right there. Looks like it was tumbling maybe whenever it came in. No exit hole in the back anywhere. That's from the test I did a long time ago. Nothing down here though. All right, we're down to part two, which is gonna be the 62 grain gold dot. Nine mil didn't penetrate. I'm surprised. See what the 223 does. Twenty six forty six velocity. All right, so I hit low. Yeah, we're gonna have to reshoot that one. I hit way down here. And that's where the uh, two by four is. All right, we're trying this one more time. This is the last 62 grain gold dot bullet I have. Hopefully I can get it through the gel, through just the drywall and insulation and into the second block. Although hopefully not actually into the second block. All right. Let's hopefully get this one a bit better. 2529 velocity. All righty, that one's definitely better. So, We entered our gel, went through, shocking. Hit it right here. I flipped it on its side, so this is definitely new. Right there. As you can see right down here, there's no exit down here, so. So once again, no over penetration. All right, double up buck. 12 gauge. The other two didn't even go through the wall. Let's uh, see what 12 gauge will do. Twelve thirteen velocity. All righty, so. You fucking get over there, you piece of shit. Honestly. Okay, yeah, no, there's definitely, I definitely hit the gel. I can see a whole bunch of streaks going through it. That was a hell of a spread from like three yards. I have 
one right here, I'll get you some up close shots, but one right here that's actually stuck here, 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 all over. None went through. You can see some of those fragments here. That's the wad going all the way through. It was actually the other way, now that I think about it. I believe, because that kind of fucked up side was there. But either way, you can see some of those where those pellets went through here. Here, there's one right there where the beat the double lot pellets actually stuck in there. Maybe right there. Right there, you can see the BB stuck in there too. So what does this tell me about overpenetration? I have to admit, I am surprised. I expected both the double lot buck and the nine millimeter frankly to go all the way through our method go through the wall and i expected them to at least enter the second block but they didn't okay now you could argue that's because i used plywood instead of drywall it's what i have okay that's what we used however i do think this uh shows very well that as long as you choose a load that's kind of made for self-defense like a gold dot like a extreme defender or double lot buck uh i think it shows pretty well that going through a target uses up a ton of energy okay none of these rounds even came out of the back again that's from a couple years ago ignore that there's no, no other holes here so my final opinion on over penetration remains exactly the same is it something to maybe consider sure do I still think it's worried about way more than it should be? Yes. For one, the chances of somebody being directly behind a wall, right behind where your target is, really unlikely, okay? Chances of you not just flat out missing your target, you're probably gonna flat out miss some of the bullets, statistically. The chances of it hitting your target, going all the way through, hitting a wall and going through, unlikely. Chances of it hitting your target, going all the way through, hitting a wall, going all the way through, and hitting someone who just happens to be there, extremely unlikely, okay? Chances of having to shoot someone with someone directly behind them? I think there's a firearm safety rule about that. You know, know what your target is and what's around it, or, you know, what's, what's behind it. So you probably shouldn't do that, but overall, pen, overall over penetration, I don't think you should worry about it nearly as much as some people do. The handgun wounding factors and effectiveness put it pretty darn well. Basically, nobody has ever been sued or there's basically never been many instances of someone being hurt because of overpenetration. But there's been a lot of officers, a lot of law enforcement officers who have lost their life because they chose a load that didn't penetrate deep enough. So... If you disagree with me, tell me in the comments below. I'd love to have a debate about it. <clears throat> but, I mean, I think these answers kind of speak for themselves. First test, if you flat out miss your target, probably doesn't matter much what you're, uh, what you're using. It's probably going to penetrate roughly the same distance. If you hit your target and you happen to hit a wall behind them, there's a halfway decent chance it's not even going to go all the way through the wall. So, there it is. So if you found the video entertaining or informative, give me a thumbs up. I appreciate it. Tell me in the comments below what you thought of the test. Do you think it was a good test? Do you think it was completely invalidated because I used a wall that's not up to code and bullshit like that, as if there's not different types of walls? Anyway, tell me what you thought of the test in the comments below. I'm the Calcara 131, signing off. Very wet Calcara because it's fucking making me sweat and shit.